All right. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday to everyone. We've got a pretty good group in. Well, let's jump right in. I have a super special treat for you. So um, over the past uh, couple of months, Brett and I have been talking a lot about the relationships between a COO or an executive, much like what we talk about here, and a CEO and the tools that each um, COO can bring, not only from a technical perspective, the actual job description, but from a personal perspective with the actual um, value add, with the actual um, relationship side and support side of that. And so with that, one of the things that, that Brett and I had talked about was we have so many incredible CEOs in our world, and a lot of them, a lot of you, have incredible COOs or operational directors within um, your world as well. And so one of the things we wanted to do is start inviting some other um, directors of operations or COOs onto this call in order to kind of tease through um, their great successes, the incredible skills that they bring and what that looks like from both a technical and personal side of their business. And so with that, um, one of the places we thought we would start was with my friend, Jenny um, Weber. Jenny is the COO and runs all of the operations for Raquel, um, who y'all may have met in our mastermind, Raquel Quinette. She's an incredibly successful businesswoman. And so it's no surprise that the gal standing next to her as her partner on the operations end is also an incredible powerhouse. And so with that, I want to go ahead and introduce Jenny. Jenny, say hi to everybody. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for jumping on with us. We thought that today would be a really, really great time to dive into a couple different things with you. One was we want to hear your story. You have been with Raquel for how long? I have been with her for about 13 years now. 13 years. Wow. How old were you when you started with Raquel? I was fresh out of high school. I think it was maybe a week, maybe two weeks out of high school. Um, so she ran our Keller Williams office um, in the West Valley Goodyear uh, of Arizona. And my mom was actually her first hire when she um, started that office. And I was just kind of like, I don't really know what I want to do. And Raquel's like, get her in here. I would love to meet her. And then we just hit it off and yeah, we've been working together ever since. So it's been, it's been a while. It's been a fun journey. <laughs> so your mom's an agent in the office and what was Raquel's role? So my mom was actually our receptionist and Raquel was the team leader for the um, Keller Williams office. Oh, how cool. Okay. So you get in and Raquel says, you guys just really hit it off. So what does your role look like when you first start with Raquel? When I first started, um, I think that like it was like personal assistant. So it's like, just come in. I just need some help, like putting like some data entry, doing some files. At the time, we had our paper files with all of our transactions, like back in the day, where it was just like one big manila folder with all of our transactions and like this big desk where we would put all of our folders. And like, I think going paperless was one of my first big projects. Um, gosh, it seemed so long ago, but um, yeah, it was just really like personal assistant. And then as she started to get busier and I was like really eager to take on more, she just handed me our REO business, um, probably within the first couple of months, I think. So it was 2008 when I started with her. So great time to start in real estate. Definitely got to learn a lot. Yeah. So hold it for just a second, take a step back. So Raquel is not only the team leader, which for those of you who aren't with Keller Williams, the team leader is really the CEO of the brokerage firm. So she's really responsible for the recruiting, retention, education, uh, coaching the top 20% of the agents in the business. It's a huge role within the Keller Williams franchise system. So she's running that whole office. And then she also, from what I'm kind of hearing, is starting to launch or has launched an REO business at that yep. point. Yep. Yeah. We, um, got, um, a few, um, uh, asset management, um, agreements that came in. Um, so we started with Fannie Mae. We had, we had a whole bunch going on, but it was hard for her to focus on those two things, right? Because coaching and recruiting was really like her big thing. Like she had to do that. That's why she was there at the office. So she really needed a right-hand person to really help 
just take care of all of the REO side of the business, which was a lot. Like asset managers were very demanding. Um, it was 24 seven. Um, so I was able to kind of take that on for her right away. Wow. Well, what I think is really funny or not funny, it's really similar to most um, gals like you that I talk to that are on the operations end. It starts first with, oh my gosh, please help me put oxygen on my mouth. <laughs> like I need to breathe. Can you help with these folders? Can you do some data entry here? Can you just, and it becomes whatever. And then as you prove yourself in it, the ability to take that on, you now have been given a rather large business line with a rather large demanding um, zig and zag, a demanding internal client. Mm -hmm. So when you were starting the processes there, that's a new business. So there weren't any processes in place, I'm guessing. No, it was all really brand new. Um, I mean, Raquel traveled a lot and she had a lot of contacts. So we were definitely able to reach out and learn from different people, but really um, it was, it was just really hands-on. Um, we just had to kind of learn as we went. And even with REOs, like every asset manager was so different. Um, I remember we had one who, who would call, um, and we would just be like, Oh my gosh, what is he going to ask? And he was like, don't, you know, line this page, this, and it was just like, Oh my gosh, like, we don't know, but we were just like, yeah, sure. Just kind of like rolling with it. And I think that's kind of one of the big things that has always been helpful is that I've always been very like, whatever Raquel, like we'll roll with it. I'll learn. And, um, I think that's been really helpful with our relationship because we didn't really know what we were doing. Um, but we were just failing forward. So. Well, I think many of the people on this call have been, um, have had the luxury and opportunity of their CEO opening up doors of opportunity. And then it's like, Oh crap, we don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> uh, and so I really, I, I love that you said that that was a big piece that um, helped with y'all's relationship. Why do you think that helped in that approach? And why does it still help today? Because we're, we're moving so fast. We're moving so fast. We're always testing new things. Um, we're always testing new um, business ventures that we may want to do. Um, there's been a lot of times where we've started something and we give our, ourselves the grace. Like we have a, a really good back-to-back as far as like, let's just test this out. Let's let's see if we like it. Like having fun and, and loving what we're doing is, is something that we're both really passionate about. So we just give ourselves that grace of like, let's let's learn it, let's have a good attitude about it and see if we wanna take this a step further. Um, and then we'll come together sometimes and be like, this, this isn't where we wanna go. Let's maybe hand this off to someone else. Um, so I think that has been a really big factor for us um, that we both have that back and forth and we're comfortable to have that back and forth with each other. There's been a lot of times where it's like, she really loves something. I'm like, I don't know Raquel. And it goes back and forth, but it's nice to have that person to kind of just bounce ideas off of. One of the things that I love that you said, and it's always something I have to remind myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking this in for me internally. It's sometimes as ops people, we want things to be perfect, right? We want to know what the system is. Then we want to run the system and we want to run it perfectly. But sometimes when it's something new or you're making it up as you go, because there is no roadmap, um, as ops people, we can be resistant to it we can try to push back on it and say, no, this is, we're still figuring this piece out, but that you and Raquel have this, you have each other's backs and we're going to work on it together mm -hmm. and figure it out together. And neither one of you looks at each other to have all of the answers. Mm -hmm. It's together. We're going to figure this out is mm -hmm. such a cool, incredible culture piece for the two of you. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's always really been there um and for our whole team too it's like we are very clear like give us your feedback let us know where you guys are at let us know what you guys are loving let us know where you guys maybe want to go instead um because we just feel like everything moves faster and one thing I will say that's been really helpful for me because I do have that ops mindset of like ooh change like ooh okay uncomfortable is I'm always really adaptable um in any situation when we're learning new things when we're in new environments um, so I'm just extremely adaptable to all of it. Um, there might be a, like a moment of hesitation, but like I have a smile on my face and I'm moving forward pretty fast. So, um, I think that's been really helpful for me. Okay. Now I'm just selfishly asking questions because I want to learn, learn from you. How do you set it up in your brain or how do you train yourself to, while you may have that hiccup for a second, how do you train yourself or what goes through your brain where you go, 
I've got to overcome that because we need to go forward. How do you do that? Um, I would say it's awareness first. Like I know internally, like that's something um, that like change is going to be a little bit uncomfortable for me. So it's like having that awareness, giving myself maybe to take a quick breath. Um, and I mean, quick breath, um, but also knowing like on the other side of it is like amazing growth, amazing potential to start new things, to start new businesses, to meet new people. Um, and it's just, it helps us move really fast when I'm less hesitant and I'm, I'm a little less structured on that, like right off the bat, because Raquel has amazing ideas. My favorite calls from Raquel, which happen often are, well, there's two of them. There's two ways she'll say it. The first is Jenny, I have a crazy big idea. And I'm like, where's my pen? <laughs> Here we go. Hit record. Yeah, exactly. And then the other one is like, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. And I'm like, yes, where are we going? What are we doing? So it's like, there might be that like, oh, okay, I got to get my pen. I got to get ready for this. But there's also that like, this is going to be amazing. I have to show up to support her because she needs that person to help push, move it to the next level. So you just got to be ready for that. And it's, it's okay to like have that hesitation because internally, I also know that having that inside of me and being very structured is also a really huge benefit because it helps us put all those pieces in place, all the structure in place. So um, yeah, you just got to have that awareness inside of you. Um, I, I appreciate that. And I talked to quite a few, um, people in similar roles to yours and mine. And, and one of the things that I'm noticing in a trend as I'm talking to them is, um, I'm super visual. So bear with me. This is Raquel, right? Or this for me is Brett. And I can have two ways that I look at them. One is the gateway or the pathway to growth, success, opportunity. Or I can say that they're absolutely insane and I can't understand them. I'm just going to try to manage them. Mm -hmm. But if you can take them and say, they're my gateway, just like you do. She calls and says, curveball, you don't go, oh, that's going to be the worst experience of my life. Like, I hate that. You say, I love that call. And then it's your job as the ops person or as the director of this side to take this put it through your world, take the, the growth part on this side, put it through here and out this side, the translation is what the team actually needs to hear in order to execute. Mm -hmm. Meaning you come up with those systems, you come up with the models, and then you help to drive that through the business. That if you can be the translator between the idea, mm -hmm. put it through the systems and models, and then help to implement it into the business. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I see it as like a filter or a, um, a purifier in essence yeah, oh, that you can that. take it and put it into the business and think of it that way versus I'm the buffer between the two. Well, that job sucks. Nobody wants to be the buffer, right? Where crap hits against it on both sides, but to be that filter or that translator to create that osmosis, mm -hmm. um, kind of cool. So I love that you guys have that. It's such a, a powerful tool Mm -hmm. to embrace. And I think a lot of us are working on it actively. Mm -hmm. And so to hear some tools from you on it is incredible. So sorry, that was my selfish <laughs> for, for my own help. Um, can I ask you some more questions about the REO business? So you get into it. What does the tracking in it look like initially? What systems are you guys using? What tools, what technology? Yeah. Uh, so when we first started, um, like I mentioned, we had like those vanilla folders and that was one of the really one of the first things that was really important for us is like, we need to go paperless. Like there's just too much. I think in a day um, we got maybe like 45, 50 um, REO assignments. Um, and it's just, it was, we got it down to a, such a like amazing system. Like we just always knew like exactly the next order that needed to happen. Um, and I think it's, it was that pressure of like, like you have to, like, it was so time sensitive. Everything was so time sensitive in that world um, that you just, you had to move really quickly to create the systems. So we actually, um, we, we moved into like paperless. We, um, we utilized a lot of like Excel sheets. Um, and then we started um, using Salesforce. We actually may have like a custom portion of Salesforce created just for our REO business, um, which was really, really helpful because there's, there's so many different factors to it. Um, and it's, it's not like your traditional trans transaction. 
Um, so we were able to create like our own personal system where it's like, it just flowed the way we needed to. All of our automations were inside of there. All of our notes were inside of there. We had it separated by different banks because every bank was different. Um, so that was something that was super helpful for us as well. Um, and then just being so organized inside of it, we were able to also translate that and train our team as well. Um, which was really amazing because we had, um, we had a, a pretty good sized team. Um, we had about three admin, we had a runner, a couple of VAs, um, but everyone was cross-trained. So it's like everyone knew what everyone else's side was. So it, like if someone was gone or if someone, whatever it was, like everyone was cross-trained and everyone knew what everyone's role was and where everyone was. And it was just such a great teamwork for all of us. And I think that was probably one of the most important things is, you know, we would not have been able to succeed without having our team there with us. For those, um, a lot of the people on this call weren't in the real estate business back in 2008. And so we've all kind of heard REO perhaps, but could you tell us a little bit about what REO is and why it was so intense, why yeah. it was so demanding? Yeah, it was, um, there was a lot of factors to it there. So um, REO business was, um, we had people going into foreclosure um, and the banks would assign the properties to us um, to help turn it over and um, sell. Um, what was difficult was a lot of times we would get the properties and, you know, the, the owners were still living there or the tenants were still living there. Um, and we would show up um, I remember being 18 and showing up on people's doorsteps and offering them cash for keys to move out of their house. And they were still paying their mortgage. They had no idea that the house was going into foreclosure. Um, so it's things like that where like you also have that emotional side, right? Where you're dealing with people losing their house. You know, it's, it's difficult. It's hard. It was a hard time, right? And then you also had the asset managers who were extremely demanding. Um, and for them, it was really, it was a property, right? It was like, let's get this sold. Let's get it on the market. <laughs> hard asset. Yeah. Yeah. So it was also dealing with that factor as well. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was, it was a different time. Definitely. Um, and I think at one time, like I mentioned, we had, um, I want to say we had about a hundred, maybe a hundred, maybe close to 150 properties. I want to say that we were running. Um, and that was anywhere from dealing with cash for keys to, um, dealing with, um, cleaning out the homes because a lot of times people would leave and they would just trash the house um, to squatters living there. It was just everything, everything in between. Like it, we, like we saw it all. Um, so it was, yeah, it was definitely a crazy time, but we learned, we learned so much. And I feel like that really set us up for seeing how important systems were in our business um, to help it just move really, really streamlined. You're absolutely right. It was the ultimate training ground for y'all. How many, um, well, the ultimate training ground is you have two external clients with very different needs, right? You have a bank that just needs the property cleaned and then sold as quickly as possible to mitigate their long-term risk as the market's continuing to do this. They just want to get it off their books. You have someone living there who may be still paying rent, doesn't realize that the property owner foreclosed it, and now you need to motivate them to move out when they may not have the financial means to do so. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the middle, you have the actual transaction management of both sides of it mm -hmm. from the listing and then also for the closing. How did you, so it is, if you can't get those, if you get those systems down, you can do almost anything, <laughs> but we're talking crazy volume. You guys were one of the top REO businesses in the country. Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching the news, like the five o'clock news and like, they would show our signs and we're like, Oh, like, you know, um, yeah, it was, it was a lot. Um, I, I looking back, I'm like, man, like we saw so much. And I, I saw Raquel comment that, yeah, there was, there was massive repairs needed. Like we would get houses sometimes and it was just like completely gutted. Um, so it was, it was hard or like we would have, we would have tenants who would take the money and then also like gut the house. And it's just like, oh, yeah. we just feel everything. Mm -hmm. And then didn't you also have to track? So once you guys disposition the property, you getting paid, is from the bank. You're chasing that for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had that pretty much down. We didn't have too many issues with that. It, it wasn't too bad. Um, but I, I think the thing that was 
always kind of floating in the air was um, the, the cash for me, cash for keys. Like we had, I, I can't remember, but we, we had like maybe six to 10 at a time sometimes where we're just kind of floating that money. And that I felt like took, could take a while to come in. Um, and it's just, you just don't know where or when it's going to happen. Um, so yeah. You yeah we're like saying six person. months to a year for reimbursements. So you guys have cash out. You've got to track that. You've got to get people out. You've got to get the repairs, hundreds of thousands of dollars out there. And you're doing pending probably 50 to hundred transactions at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the repairs are now in a team of three. Yeah. And the repairs were massive too. Like we would have, um, for any given house, like you all appliances, right. And that's all, all us like fronting all of that. Right. So you had a way to get any of that. So it's like the, the entire reimbursement system was also a big part of why we use Salesforce was because we were just able to see it so clearly. Um, sure. But you had to be so on top of like the exact amount, the check number that went out, when it went out. Um, and then when you didn't get it back, like you had to just be on top of like follow-ups and when we're going to receive it, um, making sure it came in. It, it was just, it was, we always had checks going out. It was, it was a little scary. <laughs> well, I dove into the REO side because I think it's important for everyone on this call to realize that your background in system building has been through a fire hose. So from zero, meaning like here's some manila folders to let's go paperless to a massive business with enormous risk and liability, where the risk is all taken on the front end by Raquel, right? Your CEO. So it's going to be a pressure cooker in there. Mm -hmm. And then you have the pressure cooker of the, um, of the bank, of the lender, and the pressure cooker of the emotional tenant or squatter or whatever that's, that's a pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. So having systems and models in place is really, really important. So I wanted people to know that because now as you're transitioning out of the REO business into, and over the past, call it 12 to 14 years, all the different business lines you've built, I want, I, I think it's really important for us to know your background and where you came from and now why and how you look at operational systems so uh, differently than you probably would have if you had been through that. Yeah, um, so at the time it was really just like minimum, like we just need to get this out. And then it's like this, we need to use this to, to our best advantage, right? It's what's gonna work the best for us. We definitely have tested a lot of different systems, um, but I would say it's, it's never for us, like it's never, like the fanciest system, the prettiest system, it's, it's going to be what, what's going to work. And a lot of times I'll admit, like, sometimes that's still an Excel spreadsheet. Like that's just something that works for us, depending on what it is. Right. Um, or sometimes it'll be like, we used, we use Trello a lot. Like that was something that was a big transition for us. That was super helpful that we introduced to a lot of different teams over the years. Um, especially when it was brand new, I know everyone knows Trello now, but when we first discovered that we were like, what is this? This is amazing. Um, but there's been so many systems where it's like that bright and shiny, um, object. Right. But it's like, this really doesn't, this looks really pretty, but it's just not working for us. We're not using it. So it's like, get rid of it. I think that's something that we've gotten used to is we're very quick to say, does this really, like, is this really the best use of our time is building this out? No, let's move on to something else. Um, so not getting too stuck in systems sometimes too is really important to us. Um, and then um, once we do find something, really like showing the team and getting them to adopt it quickly um, and showing them like the value of that system um, is something that's really been key to us. Um, Cause again, like we have admin, we ha they have that, oh, what are we using now? Like, oh, that hesitation, right? So it's like, whenever we do introduce something new, it's like, it's always value first. Like this is going to be so helpful. Let us show you, like, we want to introduce it to you guys. And I feel like that, that creates faster adoption. Sure. Sure. Well, you're selling to your internal client in two ways. One, you're trying to get their buy-in and two, you're trying to consistently tell your internal clients, your administrative team, I'm always going to add value to you by trying to make your job easier, make you more efficient and more effective. Mm -hmm. Um, so doing it that way versus this is what we're doing and get on board or get out of here is a very different approach. Yeah, for absolutely. sure. Um, I have a question for you. So we kind of you well, actually, you and I talked about this a little bit last week. So I have this philosophy that we spend in the real estate business all this time talking about CRMs, right? It's like what's active sales pipeline? What CRM are you using? What tags are you using? 
what does that look like? And it is a huge industry in the real estate world. You go to like family reunion for Keller Williams or any real estate convention at all. The entire marketplace is full of CRMs. Mm -hmm. But I think that piece is missing on the upside, right? Mm -hmm. CRMs on the front side, of it's the lifeblood of your business. So now as you have all of your other sides of your business for the operation side, we take it totally for granted what people utilize. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think that like what you're going to show us here, what you utilize, it's your CRM in essence on the op side, mm -hmm. your project management software and tools. Mm -hmm. uh, we're heavy in Excel spreadsheets until recently. We're just starting to use these, these tools. And all I can think is, We've spent our entire focus on the building the business side, which is the CRM, but the actual property manage or excuse me, property management, the actual project management side doesn't necessarily have as much attention to the operational tools around it. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely something that's lacking. And um, like I mentioned, we, we've spent some time like looking at different things, kind of seeing what's working and it's, it's not always project management based, right? It's, you can kind of fadaggle it a little bit and play with it, but having something that really helps you get like an overall picture of everything going on, especially when you have multiple businesses that you're running and keeping an eye on, it's just something that is extremely valuable and just absolutely necessary. So let's fast forward to where you are today. So talk me through the specific business lines you guys have. So, uh, we run, um, a coaching and consulting business. Um, number one, um, we also do still have our real estate business. Um, and then we, um, have a podcast. We also do events, uh, and retreats. Um, so we are definitely, um, we've definitely got a lot going on. It's, it's a fun world. <laughs> well, I, it's, it's, so cool that you guys have so much going on and you have so many different business lines. Raquel is incredibly gifted at looking at the monetization and opportunities all around her and how they can feed into each other and create a massive empire. And that's what y'all have, have done and are doing. Um, and it is super impressive. So I asked you about all those different business lines because when you're looking at a project management software, like you said at the beginning, it's kind of like a CRM. It's what tool are you actually going to utilize? And then how can you get it all into one place? And so we'd love if we can to have a sneak peek of you taking us through the solution that your business decided would be the best fit today for all of those different business lines. Yeah. Um, we'd love to take a look at it. And, and over the next couple of weeks, I think we'll highlight a few different types of, of different project management software and tools. Cause I think it's one of the things that on our side over at Be Wealthy, we don't have as much experience with, and it's something that we can learn from all y'all on. So yeah. we'd love to see it. Do you want to go ahead and share your screen? So as you're getting started, Jenny, when you're thinking about a software tool, right? Like you were on Trello before, as you're thinking about a software tool and you're saying, will this work for my team? And you and Raquel are bouncing it back and forth. What are some of the key components you're looking for? Uh, it really needs to um, be, I would say collaborative, um, something where our team can talk um, amongst each other inside of it. Uh, okay. Easy setup. Um, that's something that's really important to me. Um, just something that we can get in there quickly and it doesn't have like a lot of like needing coding and stuff. We've had systems before where it was like, we needed to get with someone else to help us build it. And it just, we always longer than um, we needed to, to. So those are some things that are really important to us. Um, and um, I don't know when exactly, maybe a year ago, um, we started to hear about the system called ClickUp um, and I would say we've been running it for about six months. Um, yeah. and what I love about it is it's, it's kind of like a, a mashup of a bunch of different systems. Like you can kind of, and I'll show you guys, you can kind of run like Trello with your boards through here. Um, it, it operates a little bit like Asana, but it also like, you're able to email through it. Um, you can collaborate with your team. You can do recordings through it. Um, 
So I'll show you guys a few things um, that I really love about it. Um, I was just in here this morning. I was trying not to play with it because I wanted to show you guys, but um, I I went in anyways because I had some things to look at. But what's really you cool, help I couldn't help myself. I couldn't. Um, so what's really cool is um, so we have like right when, when you go into ClickUp, you have notifications. Um, and this is really where um, I'll spend the first part of my day is coming in here because this is where my team is going to send me updates on any projects that they have. This is where they're gonna communicate with me. This is where I'm gonna be able to see where everyone's at, maybe where they're stuck. Um, so every morning I kind of come in here and even before emails really sometimes is I come in here and just do a quick run through of where is the team at and what do they need from me so that they can run with their day. Um, and it just, it makes it so easy because if you when you go through here, you can really see um, comments right away. So these are all different tasks, different projects, and it just gives me a real quick run through of any comments that they have. Um, if they're done with something, um, it'll turn, let me see if I can find one. For instance, this right here, um, I know because internally green for us is completed. So I'm like, cool, that's done. I don't have to worry about it. I can click it away. Um, and it just, it's really just makes it so easy for me to get a really quick blink on exactly where everyone's at um, and what they need from me. Um, so let me kind of show you a few different things. Um, so the way ClickUp runs is they have what they call spaces. So we use these um, for our different um, businesses. So I would say the three that we have in here that are um, pretty much 100% set up is our real estate business, our podcast, and our coaching for onboarding. So, um, and I'll show you our podcast one. Um, it was so funny. I was showing this to Caitlin last week and I was like, um, I was like, our team set this up. So I'm hardly ever in here because they just run with it. Um, and they've done a great job. Let me see if I can get it. Uh oh, can you guys hear me? Okay. I can hear you now. You froze for a second, but now you're okay. back. I was saying our, our VA set this up like she's amazing. She runs with all of our podcast stuff. So really what we've done is we came in here um, and for us, it was we broke up our podcast by guest episodes and solo episodes. So she came in here, she created these two templates um, and inside of it, and I'll open it really quickly. So what we do inside of the template is we have our SOPs in here. And then we have a checklist of um, everything that has to get done from beginning to end of our podcast. So from the moment we have a guest inquiry or from the moment we have someone book um, a podcast with us to our follow up afterwards, um, we have everything in here. And the really cool thing is you can set up the template. We have it in here as checklist. We like to do it as milestones. Um, but you can come in here and you can assign each task to a certain person so that when you copy over this template, anytime there's a podcast, it copies all of that over with it. So it's already, it goes over pre-assigned. So it, it just makes it so easy. Um, and then inside of the template, um, sorry, I'm just trying to move my screen. Um, so down here is where you can comment back and forth. Um, you can also email here directly. Um, so you can attach your, we, we use G, G, uh, Google or Gmail. So we have all that set up inside of here. Um, we typically leave it on chat. Um, the only time we really email is through our um, real estate business. The other thing that they do as well is you can record also. So um, we use Loom, but ClickUp does have a recording option. So if you guys prefer to use it internally with ClickUp, you can do that. Um, and then but, it automatically just connects to this. Yep, and it'll record it and it would connect to this card. Yep. So yeah, so we use Loom, but you could just record here directly and it'll attach as a comment and you can send it out to your team. Super, super easy. Um, I love um, that you're just kind of able to do that inside of it. Um, you can set priorities for each um, project. You can set your due dates. Um, one thing that it also does have is you can do time estimates. Um, and I was telling Kate last week, we, we don't, I don't love the time estimate factor of it. The only time I really like to use time estimates is if we are using like an outside contractor who we're paying hourly in that instance, um, it's really cool because you could track 
each task that they're doing um, and knowing exactly how long um, they're working on it. So that's something that we'll use as contractors. Um, let me show you as well. So currently, so when you create a new, well, here, you can keep, please keep going. And then I get so excited, Jenny. I'll yeah, I know, I know. It's fun. Um, yeah. So like to do, like, say if we were to copy something over, if we had a new guest episode, you can click on it, you can copy over. Um, so just duplicate and then you can, wherever you want to put it. So we would put it back in the podcast. It would go under um, our list and it would just make a new template. So now I have a new one down here. And then what we would do is we would go inside of it. And this is how it pretty much functions with all of our templates. We would just rename it. So since this is a podcast, we would say, um, this is episode 71. Um, and the guest is whoever we put the guest name. So it's kind of how we would track it. And then sure. get it out of template, we would put it into, let's say the interview has been scheduled. That's the current status. So we would just move it there. And then when you click out of this, you can kind of just see it. I swear it's my computer, it's not click if that's this slow. <laughs> well, you're zooming, you're sharing your screen. And um, so when you create this, this then gives you the workflow for your admin staff or your admin team. How many people are currently on your admin team? Um, so we have two full-time admin on our team right now. Okay. Um, yeah. So it pre-assigns everything to them. Um, so really it's just, they copy it over and then it's already pre-assigned for them. So all of the tasks, um, one thing I will say that ClickUp does not have yet is, and this is just because we prefer to use checklist items is inside of checklists. Um, you can't set a due date. Um, so um, that is something we have to do like a subtask here instead kind of operates the same way, but we really like to have the checklist checklist items just because we really like to internally, our workflows are all set on milestones, um, whether it be one week out, two weeks out, whatever that is, that's kind of, just kind of how we've always operated. Um, so that's not something they have yet, but I know it's something that they've been um, talking about introducing. Um, can I ask you some questions around how this works in your world? Um, cause I think kind of like a CRM, whatever buttons work best for you, whatever mentally works best for you, this is crazy robust, but I think this is the science. And then there's some art components of why it's so impactful for y'all. And I want to tease some of those out for us. Um, Walk me through, so your ops team has access to this. You're assigning tasks to them, but let's go up a level, right? So here's kind of the, if I go back to that analogy of the filter, Raquel comes to you with an idea or Raquel comes to you with a new plan or, hey, here's my new guest on this podcast or let's do this new uh, retreat or event. Mm -hmm. um, what does that look like? So you and Raquel meet, she comes up with idea. Is she the one who launches it in here? Is Raquel living in here at all? Um, no, Raquel, um, I, I don't know. She's hardly ever in here. I don't even know if she knows her login. Um, <laughs> she's just not, like, she doesn't touch it. Like, this is not where her time is best utilized. So she's just, she's not in here at all. She has access to it if she wants to jump in and see anything. Um, awesome. If Raquel's in here, there's there's a bigger issue. Um, so... Right. So you're building this for how you, you and your team can best implement Raquel's business plan. Yep. Raquel's coming up with said business plan. You guys shape it together in your conversations. And then this is how you then take it and drive it into the business. Yeah. So uh, Raquel and I get together. Um, we, we talk often, but we have um, a really in-depth. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. Um, we have a really in-depth one-on-one -on -one every Monday. Um, so after those Mondays, I have an action list of just different things to do, different projects to start, um, different things to look into. Um, and what I do for myself is I really needed a way, cause what I used to do is like, okay, I need to sit and I need to like one by one assign these tasks to people. I need to kind of build out what, what it's going to look like instructionally. Like what, what does the team need for me to get this work? 
give them the vision. I have to really get them to understand like what, why we're doing this next thing. Um, so one thing that has been amazing for me um, is I actually have a dashboard um, that I have, I call it my do and delegate delegate list. And I left this up so that I could show it to you again. Um, it, so for example, these are just some things that I put on here that so I could show you guys. So at the end of that one-on-one -on -one with Raquel, I, my to-do list sometimes can be so long and I used to be so overwhelmed and, and just the having to delegate it was a task, right? I'm like, I need someone to do this for me. So what I learned is how to click up is I, I, cause we do it on like a word doc. So I just have my action items. I copy it over and I put it into this list for myself. Um, and so what I do is let's say I need someone to help me, um, do this content checklist. I can go directly to it. I can make it a task. Um, I can select where I want to go. So whatever business it needs to be inside of, maybe it's just a project. So I'm going to assign it to a team member and I can do it all right here through this. And it, this has saved me so much time. So I'm going to give this to Angel. I'm going to let her know that it's high priority. And then I need it by tomorrow, let's say, and then I can create it. Um, and then it shoots right off to her. If I need to give her more details, which a lot of times I might, I can go directly into that task and just start to give her a description of what exactly she needs to do. A lot of times it's just me recording a Loom video for her, um, but then I'm done and I can move on to the next action item. So that used to take me so long to just get through my to-do list and delegating it. And now it's just, it's so much quicker. So that has been a game changer for me inside of ClickUp for sure. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um... I love that you and your team run this. Raquel has visibility to get into it, but really you're the translator to bring it back up to her where it's not, I'm building the system for Raquel. It's I'm building the system to implement the business. And then when Raquel has specific questions, needs to plug in, maybe see one or two things. It's I can give her the communication updates, information efficiently and effectively. She doesn't need to plug in to do it. Yeah. I think that's for a lot of our systems. It's it's making sure she has the visibility and that it's delivered to her in a way that works for her. Um, but it's not necessarily, it, it doesn't require her feedback. It doesn't require her to look at it. It doesn't require her to create anything. So she knows it's writing if she wants to look at it. Um, but for the most part, she, she just doesn't need to be in here. Like she has so many other things that she's focusing on. So, and she knows that the team is just running with it, which I think is, is the well, it's not, it's not her highest and best use. We need her to go grow the business mm -hmm. so we can run it. If Raquel's in here, we're not making any money. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I was like, if she's inside of here, there's something else going on. We're missing. Yeah. Something. It's tragic. Yes. <laughs> How does that work? Um, and obviously if Raquel's on, the, yeah, Raquel is on this call. Raquel, plug your ears. How does that work as far as, is there ever any, um, tension, friction, rub from you saying, I need to build this system so it works really well for me and my team, but how you communicate and see things is different than how Raquel likes to see things. How does that work as far as, is it the one-on-one -on -one where you convey the information to her or, cause she likes to see things probably differently than you do, or her brain works differently than yours. Yeah, uh, I would say for the most part, we we run how, how Raquel likes to see it. And I think it just come, it has come over the years of working with her. So I know so there's not usually too much back and forth as far as like, that's not really what I was thinking. Um, we've just gotten it to a point where I pretty much know um, that there's 99% of the time I, I'm hitting it on, <laughs> on the head, right? Um, so we have really, just so that it's faster for us, we've taught sure. the team to think that way too. So like, if it's as simple as creating an agenda, like I know the way Raquel likes it, the team likes the, knows the way that I like to see it. So it just, it runs from the way Raquel likes to see it, the entire team is on board and knows um, how to do it the same way. So that consistency is just something that makes it a lot easier for us so that when it does get back to Raquel, um, it's not something where she's like, whoa, this is nothing like, where, where am I looking at? I, you know, it's, it need, just needs to be easier. Cause if we get Raquel's eyes on something, we just need it to be fast. We need it to be a fast decision from her. I think that that's really important. I was talking to another, a, a, a friend of mine, who's also in a similar role, Katie, uh, last week. And we were talking about how really how we like to see things 
may look and feel very different than how they want to see things. And we have to do that translate between the two. It's our job to translate, not theirs. We don't need to bend them to our structure. And this was mostly me venting to Katie. We don't need to bend them to our structure. Like I don't need Brett to get super into the formulas of my spreadsheet, but I do need to make sure that my summary tab of my spreadsheet visualizes it in the way that Brett's brain works so he can make those business decisions. Yeah. I was like, yeah. That's what doing. yeah, exactly. And on, um, on the other hand too, there are times where Raquel just has so many things going on. And she's like, this is what I'm thinking. I don't have all the answers yet. I don't fully see it. Can you guys just create some things and like it, it'll help me get my brain going. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the team's like on board with that. I feel like that, like, we love that. Cause it's like, okay, cool. Like we could have like our creativeness come out a little bit. And a lot of times it's something where she'll just make like a few tweaks or she's like, that's perfect. Like, that's exactly what I needed to see. That's exactly what I needed to talk through. Um, so that I can like really start to get my brain going. So a lot of times that's it too, is she really doesn't know, but she gives the team like some leeway to like creatively think of like, how can you guys help me? What are you guys seeing? Um, which the team loves obviously, cause it's a big, that's a big growing learning experience for everyone. Well, it's a, an incredible compliment to be able to trust your team. You guys then to trust her to be able to look at it and view it and not to be concerned if she has tweaks, it's, it's, you're stimulating her creative process as well. So how cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's so fun. So now how are you? So you have your one-on-one -on -one with Raquel, you then take it on your sheet and you plug it in here and then boom, you start leveraging pieces out and driving for results. Mm -hmm. Now, what does your accountability or communication look like with your team utilizing the tool? Yeah, so we, um, our team talks a lot. We, uh, we have, I have one-on-ones with our admin um, every Monday. We do daily check-ins every day as well. Um, and those daily check-ins we do through Slack. So, and that looks like, here's what I did yesterday. Here's what I'm working on today. Here's where I'm stuck daily is what is that we, we're always touching base with each other and then Wednesdays we do another huddle just midweek check-in where's everyone at are we needing to push things back do you need a little bit more time are you stuck so it's that constant communication of where is everybody at um so that we're not waiting for something or if they're sometimes needing help or whatever it is we're there for each other so we definitely check in a lot with each other um if you were one of the first ops people, so maybe this is you back in the beginning of the REO days and technology, you have a time machine. So technology comes with you and there's obviously other, there's softwares out there. If you were just a single ops team member, maybe you have an international team member or two, but you're kind of at more of a beginning stage. Your business isn't quite as big as, is what you're running today what would be important for you in looking at the software? Would you jump into something robust like this that then you can grow with? Would there be a segue in between that? What would you be looking for if you were talking to yourself 10 years ago? Um, automation probably would be my big one is what can I automate? If it was just myself singly, I think that would be my biggest thing is what can I automate? And hopefully everything, right? Like that's, that's probably the biggest thing is like those little tasks and something I used to do actually a lot um, back when it was just myself was I would take some time. I would take a chunk out of my week, usually on a Friday. Um, I live in my calendar. So like anything I do, I put in there, even if it's like an unexpected call, I put it in my calendar. And at the end of the week, I take a look at it and I'm like, okay, what do I need to delegate at? What, what do I need to stop doing? What do I need to automate? Like, can that have been, was that an email that should have been automated? Was that a system that could have been automated so that it's taking less of my time and it's just being done automatically? I think that alone um, saves so much time um, and just helps things run without you needing to be inside of it. If you, that, that's, that was a huge aha for me, just so you know, that I, um, I need to do a better job of tracking my in-between appointment where it's like, I have a call here and a call here, but I did take two unexpected calls here. Was there, is there a similar thing? Those are a trend line that those people are asking those same questions. Can I automate that to give people the right answer? Or there seems to be a hole here. That was huge for me. Thank you for that. Um, a lot. The, 
do you um you and you and Raquel have an incredible relationship and an incredible zig and zag it's that real rocket fuel kind of approach mm -hmm. when you um look at that I'm gonna probably not say this in the complimentary way that I want to I want you to know I mean this is the ultimate compliment you started with Raquel like and then started with Raquel and respectfully didn't have any formal training or education around how to run an operational team. Mm -hmm. Yet the language I'm hearing today and the relationship that I'm seeing today is of an incredibly accomplished COO running a huge business and in, in a good sized team. Mm -hmm. um, how did that evolve over time? Because I think a lot of us especially it was for myself early on in my operations career, I was always concerned of being, cause I'm very competitive also of being top graded mm -hmm. as well as being concerned with um, not growing as fast as my CEO mm -hmm. alongside them. So how did you do this? Raquel already was incredibly gifted and talented and had a huge business. You come in at 18. And then fast forward 13 years later to where you are today. Yeah. How did that happen? Yeah. And you know, when I first started, um, I was, I was really a sponge. I just wanted to learn everything. Um, so those early years, and I, I always tell people this, and it was really helpful for when we had our real estate team too, is um, I would just, so we had a small office uh, and I sat beside her at this little round table working on my little laptop. Um, and so many people would come in and talk to her and she'd be coaching them. And I would just like soak every ounce of it up. And it's just like, what can I learn from this woman? And it's not even just her language. It would be the way she reacts to things too. And I still, to this day, like I, anything that she says, and sometimes she doesn't even notice what she's saying. And like, that was so good. We were just um, traveling and um, she had to speak. And so we were getting ready to leave the room and she was just talking to herself and she's like, pressure's a privilege, pressure's a privilege. And I'm like, I don't even think she realizes like how impactful that just was. And I like, it stuck with me. And I was just like, that was so good. Like that's your mindset before you go on stage is pressure's a privilege. And like, she's just, she is such an incredible person. And I think for myself, it's like, I want to be in this world. I want to support her. I know her ultimate vision and we're so in line and in tune with like just being servants that it's, it's kind of internally, it's like, I know I need to always like up level myself. What do I need to be learning? I need to constantly every day earn the position that I'm in um, because it's not just going to be given to me. So that's something that was just really important to me. And she, in her seeing that, she'll always give, give me the opportunities to grow and to learn and to do whatever I want to do. I just have to be willing to say yes um, and make sure I'm prepared internally for when that happens. Um, so she's just been an incredible mentor. And I know she's on here listening. <laughs> she's probably blushing, but I will tell you, I've, I've had the opportunity to spend some time with her as well. And um, every moment with her is a blessing because you're right. It's the first she walks and acts and treats people with such grace and kindness. Um, and then also has the ability to um, lead and command. Um, she's a, a commanding presence that has incredible softness and grace as she's diving and listening and, and pouring into others. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think Raquel's pretty badass myself. <laughs> I don't disagree with you on that. Um, Y'all's relationship over time, you know, you and I were giggling earlier because people always say like, oh, I wish I had a Jenny or, oh, I wish I had a Whitney or a Katie or, you know, a lot of the guys and gals who are on this call. And the truth of the matter is I see it as such a chemical reaction. Working together is that incredible thing that you're saying you see and you want. It's not just Jenny and it's not just Raquel. It's that chemical reaction they create. It's not just... Whitney and Joe and Taylor. It's it's Whitney, Joe and Taylor all together that create that dynamic. So if we pull just Whitney out or if we pull Katie out or if we pull Jenny out, it can look different. And so as a the Jenny to the Raquel, 
how does that relationship or how do you continually control that chemical reaction to be a really positive growing one? Yeah, it's definitely something that has evolved um, over time. And I think, you know, where we're at today is we just, we get, we get each other so well, like she knows how I operate. I know how she operates. Um, and we just have the same vision and what we want to do and what we want to create. Um, but I, I think for the both of us, like it, it, it's something that we're constantly working on, right? It's like, it's like a marriage, you know, there's good days, there's bad days. There's, there's days where it's like, oh, okay. Like today's not the day to like throw something <laughs> or like, um, but we just know that about each other. Um, and we're constantly working at it. And I think what has been a big factor for us too, is, um, the friendship that we have built out of it too. So it's just something that we're constantly working on. Um, and we're always, we're always willing to be extremely transparent with each other, which I think has been such a huge blessing. Um, and just knowing that, you know, there's a lot of things that we're going to face and as long as we can do it together, like we could really do anything. Like I mean wow. that, I mean that woman, like we could do anything. Um, and I think we both know that. So it's just showing up for each other. Um, yeah. Day to day. So I think it's interesting because I do get that question a lot. I get the, I, I actually get, um, do you have a sister <laughs> or can I clone you? And I'm like, you know, like it's, it's not something that would maybe work. Like you said, like if you took me out and you replaced me with, or if you took me and I worked for this other CEO, like, it's not the same thing where we have gotten today has taken a lot of work. Um, and we've, we've gone through a lot. We've gone through a lot of markets. We've gone through a lot of businesses. We've learned a lot. So it's like together, like it's taken, it's taken the both of us to just really show up today and want to make it work for us to get to where we are today, which is such a huge blessing, you know? I love everything you just said. <laughs> um, it was absolutely perfectly stated that it's a marriage and that there's good days and bad days and that there's ups and downs, there's good years and bad years, um, but it's that you both are driving and striving in the same direction and supporting each other in it. So that's incredible. Um, oh my goodness, we have done, I have just been selfishly asking you a million questions, but I'm guessing some other people on this call may have some questions for you. If y'all have some questions, unmute yourself or plug them in the chat. If you don't, I'll ask one more. All right, I'm just gonna jump in for one more, but unmute yourself if you've got one. We have a lot of CEOs on this relationship. So a lot of people sitting in Raquel's seat who may have a great ops person that they're currently working with, maybe looking for one. If you were a CEO wanting to develop a relationship like you and Raquel had, what would your advice to be for them? Um, I think at the end of the day, it's like it, Raquel knowing that um, ultimately what my vision is um, and she will always show up to support that and she will always show up and provide opportunity. Um, I think that has been one of the biggest things is, and that's just something internally for me is like, I, I can't be stagnant and she knows that about me. So she will always offer that opportunity. Like there's, there's no ceiling. Like if I were to say, Raquel, I want to go build this. Awesome. Let's do it. Um, so for me, um, and that's just my own personal, um, thing is like, I just need to, I can't be stagnant. I always need to be growing. I always need to be learning. Um, so she shows up and, and always provides that. Um, and for, for different CEOs or different ops people, it might be something different. Um, but I think knowing that internally um, and providing it is just something that has made a big difference. That's incredible. I, I, I love that you have been transparent to um, share with her what that needs to look like and that you continue to strive for it. And then she continues to support you in it. Um, it's definitely a zig and a zag. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> Anybody else have a question for my dear friend, Jenny? All right, Jenny, I can't thank you enough. Um, we had a, a great group of people on the call who learned an absolute ton from you. We will be posting this into the Facebook group. So if there's some of you who want to go back and watch it, or maybe share it with someone else in your business, um, you absolutely can do so. It's in the guides on the, it'll be in the guides on Facebook group, probably by tomorrow morning. And then Jenny, of course, in the chat box, you're getting a million thank you. So thank you, my dear. Everyone have a great day and off to a great week. Thank you. Bye guys.